edition of the Ash Can Podcast, where we talk about uh, comic book and geek related culture, games, um, sci fi. Um, I'm Jason. Uh, I've been wanting to do uh, a podcast for a while. Um, and uh, the it, so to share my love of the of the medium and and to talk to other people and build a community um my uh co-host uh i've known since uh the eighth grade um he's a collector like i was or he's, he still collects where i kind of intermittently do it and maybe we'll get into that later on um a fantastic human being uh very giving uh, please welcome Phil. Hey, Jason. Hey, that was a really nice intro for me. Thanks. Yeah, man. no problem. It's it's a Thanks, pleasure. No problem. It's uh, a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, um, this episode is uh, brought to you by True Sound Cables. Uh, it's a custom uh, boutique uh, instrument cable company run by a friend of mine locally here where I live, um, and where he custom builds cables. Uh, um, for you know whatever your needs are, uh, you can hit him up at uh, truesoundcables at gmail dot com. Um, so anyway, uh, like I said in the introduction, I've known Phil for a lot of years. Um, mind you, uh, we haven't seen each other for a lot of years. <laughs> this is uh, true. Yeah, uh, we both grew up uh, within the same town. Um, and we both met over our, our shared uh, hobby of comic book collecting and art. And uh, so I figured he would be a qualified person, more qualified person than I am, um, because uh, or I don't collect every month. Um, I lost my collection a number of years ago. Um, so I have trades and they got some single issues and I try to dab into it when I have extra money. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so, uh, but that's how we met and that music, of course. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Um, but we were, yeah, we just grew up in a, I don't know what, what we call, what would you call Sparta then? Like a small town. So yeah, Sparta, Wisconsin, s- small town, uh, e- I mean, it's not like, you know, a one, one row town, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's just, uh, you know, dust in the wind. But it's, you know, it's 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 a cute little community. But more importantly, it's 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 a community because there's a, a military base right on, like right nearby, in between, uh, Sparta and Toma right. on the on the western side yep. of Wisconsin. So. Uh, yep. and I kind of think that's uh, a little of the of the origin for you coming to to Sparta, and uh, right, yeah, because my dad was um, in the Army Reserves. I grew up. We originally grew up outside um, in a suburb of Chicago, uh, and I was about I was about thirteen, and we moved. My parents decided to move us up to um, Wisconsin. We did. We ended up in Sparta. Uh, for for the first year and a half, we lived in Norwalk, um, which was very different for me. Um, but then, like I said, um, about a year and a half later, um, we moved to Sparta. My dad bought a house, uh, and I started going to the high school where Phil and I both met in yeah. reading class, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, and he's been, I mean, and so, um, you know, it's just we, you know, we we've shared a lot of a lot of comic books, a lot of music um, experiences. Well, him, well, go ahead. There's not a whole lot to do in Sparta. Uh, growing no, there's up, not. <laughs> there's it, not. You <laughs> now there's find... more stuff to do than oh, yeah. there was. But even then, like the downtown area um, where we would, when um, oh, the comic book store, the Cubby Hole, the Cubby moved. Hole. They had that location. There was really nothing. There was like a drugstore, um, a lot of bars, um, yeah. some retail space. You know, not not a whole lot. You know, we I mean we had a you know the you know elementary school, uh, middle middle school, and uh, the junior high school. Yeah, let me say but not that, a whole lot. That the the escalation of uh, 
of uh, bars Go. ratioed to to churches <laughs> in Wisconsin. It, it's in it's an ongoing <laughs> escalation. There's there's more bars and more churches. Oh, yeah. than Anything else? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was hard right, to find yeah. a lot of entertainment as a kid. You know, you, you did what you could, but right, uh, right. For somebody like me, I wanted to find you know something to 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 grasp onto. It, I knew there was more than than farming. I knew there was more than uh, you know just hunting and you know just the 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 regular right. uh, things you grow up doing in a in a smaller town. And and that's that's right. kind of uh, reading and finding music, you know, all that stuff. Just, right. That 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 was the passion that that started, you know, as a kid. Right. And, yeah. yeah. Well, it was escape for a lot of us. I mean, because you, yeah. you know, if you weren't, you know, if you weren't, I mean, back then it wasn't like this cool thing that it is now. Like you were looked at kind of strangely, you know. I mean, granted, we uh, mutually overall we got along with everybody that we went to school with and didn't have, you know, too, too terrible of a time of it. Um, but it was just one of those things, like Phil said, like he and I, you know, I don't think, I, I know I have never hunted. I don't think Phil has ever hunted. Um, I don't come from a farming background and neither really does Philip for the most part. Um, you know, like my dad was in the army reserves and then he, eventually ended up at Toro as a painter. And then my mom was at times a stay on home mom at to- at other times. Uh, she had like retail and like, you know, fast food jobs, mm-hmm. but oh, yeah. you know, I mean, but really like for me, it was, you know, like, I mean, my dad at the, at the army, what was an active army base, um, you know, that was a big part of, you know, my, my childhood, especially. And then when Philip and I started hanging out and he would come over to the house, you know, he kind of got to be around that too. I, um, and I have two younger sisters. Um, and Philip's got a younger brother. So it, we were kind of like, you know, I don't know what it was, but like, we just, you know, we went to class together and then we, I don't know how we found out we, we liked comic books. I don't even know how it came up, Seriously, but then all of a sudden yeah. we were just, <laughs> I don't, I mean, no, like, you know, it, it was just kind of cool. I mean, but it was just kind of cool. And then we just started talking and then hung out and, you know, discovered that we well, like comic I do have books. To say, I, I do got to say, uh, meeting you, like, I, I love comic book characters and, and everything like that. But as far as collecting comics and staying current, you were my gateway into that. Let me just say that, like, to, to, yeah. to, to recognize writers to recognize artists and to to find you know the deeper lore of characters and 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 books that I never even heard of, like you, you kind of yeah, I was doors for me. So I I well, I it was kind of weird because right. Well, it's kind of weird because what I what I find out well what I kind of rediscover later on apparently like. I don't know if we were officially diagnosed by a doctor, but like <laughs> we have all three of us kids have ADD mm-hmm. and apparently like that was my way of like, that was what I did. I totally geeked out and read everything I could get my hands on, uh, comics, um, you know, uh, especially, you know, like, the old, what I'll call the old guard, like Neil Adams, um, uh, God, who else from that era? Like, you know, Neil Adams, um, I'm blanking, Jim Aparo, or Jim Aparo, like those guys, I always looked at them, you know, like they, to me, they were, they were legends and they didn't, you know, and they didn't have, they were, that, that was just already established because of what they did in, in respective books with, um, Neil Adams working with Denny O'Neill on the green arrow, um, mm-hmm. green lantern book, um, hit what he did with Batman, taking him out of the sunshine and the goofiness of the, uh, the fifties and sixties and brought him back to where he belonged, um, operating at night, and, you know, being this kind of this, this uh this just you know this 
this vigilante. Yeah. In you, so you, many words. Yep, um, you turned him into like a like a guardian and kind of got rid of the right. the the adventure um you know type type feeling you know right of the of the like one shot stories of this and that you know it, right there right. there became a bigger narrative i think uh when he started doing stuff right right and it was also a big thirst for it too for me cuz it was just like i you know indie comics weren't this kind of this this kind of very very i don't want to say it was this above ground thing um, but it wasn't like this underground thing either. And when you, you start looking into stuff and like, and you see what people talking, like reading about it. Oh, really? You know, like, um, what would be one for an example? Like the crow. Okay. You know what I mean? That was very, very underground. And it was one of those things when they made it a movie, it became very prevalent to people, you know, that, oh, this was a comic book and, and what have you. Um, but it was just always that thing that I sought out. Like I didn't care. Like I'm not saying I didn't read great books all the time, but I was willing to gamble, and I didn't really consider myself to be either um, DC or Marvel specific, which mm-hmm. I think it helped me. Where I was, I was free to look at other things. I looked at other things. Plus, um, my uh, my uh, grandma. My mom's mom, Grandma Sipe, she uh, they she had like comic books from like when my mom and Aunt Knuckles were kids and looking at. So I read like a lot of the old school, um, uh, you know, Sergeant Fury, yeah, and the Howling Commandos, like that, 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 the World War Two type of stuff. Not so much outright eerie, but like some of the horror comics. Okay. Uh, a lot of Archie. A lot of Archie. I guess. Uh, go ahead. For, for I guess for me, when I started like reading like comic strip type um, uh, literature, it was yeah, it was probably a whole lot of like the Mad Magazine type stuff. Um, cause, right. Uh, uh, my parents were both teachers, and as as a kid, and not quite in you know. Uh, like preschool or or you know kindergarten or you know having half days or something uh, i would spend time right. at a babysitter's and she had a bunch of older older boys who who had already been through right. high school and they had stacks upon stacks of like go ahead you're magazine. breaking up okay go ahead i'm sorry uh they had stacks and stacks of mad magazine and crack magazine and i you know i i couldn't get the gist of everything i was reading but I, I think a lot of that was the start for me uh, of, you know, reading with pictures and, it, you know, I, sitting down to a book without pictures now, you know, it, it, it can be done, but just having that visual and, and ha- seeing that art, that's what really attracts me a whole bunch to it. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of my... Well, yeah, it was a way to tell a story. Yeah, it's like this illustrative narrative, you know. Like sometimes there doesn't even have to be words on a page, so to speak. It's just these these pictures telling and conveying, you know, the storyline, the emotion of the characters. You know, what is going on? Is it is it scary? Is it funny? You know, is it serious? Um, you know, there's a lot of that too. I mean, you know, there there is also that. I mean. Um, you know, but the Mad Magazine was, you know, I remember reading that, you know, I had a buddy of mine in my hometown that he, they, they were pretty big in a Mad Magazine. Um, so, but, you know, it's just cool. Like, it was just so different. You know, like, at, like once you realize that, like, the, there are these artists that your eye catches and you're like, oh, yeah, that guy. And then you find out about that guy mm-hmm. or the writer, you know, what whatever they're getting into. Um so that was, you know, but I just, I don't remember being regulated to any one thing. I just kind of read whatever caught my attention, um, looked into who I wanted to look into. Um, you know, uh, Philip and his, and his dad were gracious enough to take me to two comic book conventions. Yep. Sure. The, Chicago yeah. Comic Con. Yeah. The original, 
the original Chicago Comic Con, not, not C2E2, Outer right? World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where I got to like, we got to see these creators, you know, and it was like for us, like you know, who you know, you know, living in, living in and around Sparta, Wisconsin, you those guys don't come there, right? They, you know, it, they don't. It, it was a special time in very, very what much was, so. What was it? Was it ninety three and ninety four? I believe is, is the years that we went. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Saint Neil Gaiman was the head, uh, was the guest of honor, the first one. Yeah, yeah. Who was the second one? I don't remember the second the, the second year. Because I want we went consecutive years, and but I don't remember the second one. Har, was it Har, Har, not Harlan Ellison? Was it? Uh, I don't think so. It could have been Peter David. I don't know. Oh, I'm I can't remember. To... I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a way to find out. I mean, we could find out. Um, but it, which was cool. So it brought like these two, you know, you know, these two teenagers to something that like where you felt a part of, and you get to see these creators. Like we were, weren't we? We were do. We were somewhere, and we met like Eric Larson. Yep. Um, you know, it, it, like who, like, oh my, and then he was doing Savage Dragon at the time. When, when we went, Image had started the like year before, I think. Yes. Yeah. And these guys were like white hot in the, in, in, in right. the comic scene. Um, right. Uh, I believe that first year we got to meet, uh, Eric Larson. Yes. Uh, Mark Silvestri. Uh, I don't. Did I see may, him? Maybe. He I know there. you did. Maybe he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was. I know you remember. Should him have been there because his studio was. Presented. Yes. Oh yeah, he was cool. I remember him being really cool. Oh yeah. Um, you know where you, yeah, like just all these guys. Um, was. Did we go to the Van Prella booth that first year? I think so. The Harris re- comics. I, yeah, I remember somebody cosplaying, and like that was amazing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Uh. Yeah. That was that first year because I bought like the first issue of their of their launch of Vamprella, and I had like I what I can remember. I don't have it anymore. What I can remember was as I had everybody from like the editor in chief to the anchor to the writer and Adam Hughes's signature. Oh cool. Yeah, that that's cover. right. Adam Adam was Yeah, before he became like like where he's like I mean where he like he, he I mean he was a kind of a big deal, but he's a really big deal now. Yeah. Um, you know, it just these fantastic memories and the in reading, you know, really good stories and it just you know, it kept it kept us out of trouble. <laughs> like for you know, for the most part, you know, a lot of you know, comic books in this case, and then music, like kept us out of a lot of trouble. What kept me out of it a lot of trouble, um, you know. But um, so we, uh, so that's yeah, that's you know, that's just you know how we met and how we you know we got to uh, build a friendship on that. Um, so uh, we figured we were talking amongst ourselves and uh, we cut, uh, Phil had suggested doing a podcast. I've been wanting to do one, like I said. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's do it. You know, you know, Thursday or Friday. Uh, so we're going to try to do it biweekly. Um, we'll probably do more of, you know, we'll, you know, like where we'll be talking about like collecting and, and certain things. Or maybe talking about a specific issue or a storyline. Um, maybe not necessarily current events. Uh, it's, it's okay. We'll have to play that by ear. Well, um, because like I don't know how I don't. I think people went broke when Civil War came out. Like I know I wasn't collecting at that point, but like when I I think there was over a hundred comics told when that was over with. 
Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. just huge. I mean, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, by that point, I'm, uh, you know, Philip and I are both, uh, both parents. I'm a grandparent. Um, you know, uh, and Philip has uh, two kids, and they, I think you've got, you know, where they kind of enjoy like comic books and card, you know, the uh, like card games and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a chip off the old shoulder, a little, <laughs> but, uh, uh, one, yeah. uh, one is an adult and she, she's very into, uh, the, the geek culture, uh, into so many yeah. things oh, yeah. like, like I Na- would be, uh, Natalie. Yeah. Natalie. Right. Yeah. 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 Her, I remember her name was Natalie. Yeah. Um, now how, now the younger one, is she, what is she into? Why is she into all of it or just some of it or uh she you know she more so likes like cartoon series um she gets right uh, we were just watching disney plus today and oh, I, yeah? brought, I brought up the old x-men cartoon from from the 90s oh that, yeah that, that fox kids had yeah so i started right that, yeah and she's like she knows who they are, and she's actually watched the series before. But she's like, "There's right. so many '90s references. I'm like, can can we watch right. X Men Evolution instead? You know?" I'm like, "Really? Okay. Oh, because that's what they're familiar with. Yeah, she's yeah. more familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of her gateway. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was our gateway? And we look back at all that fondly to the generation you know to like you know our kids it's just like what is it they're laughing probably like what is that mm-hmm. you oh, know definitely. maybe not even getting the references like you know with the x-men cartoons um or you know not really you know there are even in some cases like characters that they really don't touch anymore that's true and and that is a, a topic of discussion you know can okay can, can characters, you know, move through time? Can what? It's, it, like, can, like, characters, right. like, franchises, can they move through time and still stay relevant? <sighs> Even though, you know, well, we love we, we love the way they were back then, but, you know, right. can, can some, some things hold their own pretty well? Okay, but, well, let's, okay, well, while, while, while we're talking about it, let's, let's bring up the one, let's bring up the one that I was actually thinking of, uh, Gambit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, because now think about it, Gambit was like the kind of it's it appear it appeared to me at the time like the 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 new the new kind of big breakout franchise because you had Wolverine in like the eighties, and then you had you had Gambit, this kind of this roguish character from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And, you know, this kind of this lovable rogue who's got this kind of crazy past as an assassin. Yeah, he, um, was, he was mysterious. Right. And, uh... And, it, oh, and also, too, like, charisma. he had a lot of pockets. Yeah. He had a lot of pockets. And I remember hearing an interview with Jim Lee, and he regretted drawing him that way. Because <laughs> he would have to draw him with all those pockets and, and, uh, and his, and his, and his uniform. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like he was the, he was like for us, like he was that big, he, to me, he was becoming on par with Wolverine. And then I'm not really sure what happened. Cause he was created by Jim Lee, I think. And Fabian Nicieza. Uh, Gambit. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Let me, I let me look say... that up here. Hang on. Because that's say what Will I. That's Partacio. who, Portasio. Uh, Will. Sp- yeah, I, I think so. Or, or it might have been Lee. Hang on. I apologize, I type really slow. Well, for sure, for sure, Chris Claremont wrote him. The first way I know he, yeah, uh, Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, and Mike Collins is who's credited towards to that. Okay. Um, but he was that big breakout thing, and then you know, really prevalent in uh, you know, um, 
like the collectible cards. I think he got his own solo shot, like his own solo mini series. I think he had the mini, you know, then the big love interest with uh, Rogue, and they did yep. a comic. They had that series together. Then all of a sudden, like I don't know what happened, but like you don't see him. Like I don't know so much in comic. I don't think in comic books, but like the only time I ever saw him was in. Um, Wolverine, that when the first Wolverine movie with Hugh Jackman, yeah, they had Gambit in there, and the way I don't know if it was because of the way it was written or if it was the way that uh, the actor played him, it was like he was almost unmemorable. On the flip side, though, Deadpool, who was the secondary character out of the the New Mutants, is a huge franchise now. And then they somehow it was like lightning in a bottle with Ryan Reynolds getting it, like playing the part. <laughs> I mean, what, for, I mean, it is. What 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 astounds me, and, and think about this, is that Deadpool has been rated R, and it appeals to the the adults. Um, and well, the adults now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it appeals to kids. I mean, yeah. we, we talk. I remember us talking about Deadpool. And you initially didn't care for him. If I remember correctly, what you said was you didn't really care for him. Right. In so many words. And that you appreciated hey. him later on, I think is what, what you said. I, I mean, I could be mis- misspeaking, but. No, no. It, Deadpool was not anything. I, I didn't think he was going to amount to much of anything, honestly. Yeah, because, it was like a throwaway character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I Fabian did something with them where he made him like a smart ass. Right. And, and just gave him that that wacky mentality. And right. that's what yeah, that, the, the, that's the quirky really humor. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That, I mean, because I because I went back and read the collected um, stuff of that, uh, of like his, his first appearance and then that first uh, miniseries they did with him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. Like, that's totally um, Fabian Nicieza, like, creating this character, like, really flushing this character out. I can't remember the artist who initially did him. Liefeld. No, no, yeah, New Mutants, but the, 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 the miniseries wasn't Liefeld. I don't know. Oh. It was... Uh... Was it Materia? Joe Materia? Yeah, Madaria, yeah, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was. I know he did. I think he was that first one. So, you know, but how? So we have like where this character who was launching to be the next big thing, and then the other one that came by and just blew everybody out of the water. It's you know, true. it's true. I think, I think, I think Gambit, like in a way, appeals to, um like uh, he he appeals to uh i don't know like kind of like a, a like a, a romantic kind of gothic y thing yeah you know you know like if he if he were to be like in a romance novel he would be the mysterious guy with the rippling muscles and you know what have you whereas deadpool is just straight out crazy and he's the book that your parents won't let you read Right, and he's I mean, he, yeah, he he doesn't ah, like 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 what I said, you know, he's it appeals to adults, the level of violence right. and sadisticness that he he kind of you know puts out there, but right. you know it it still appeals to kids too, but they don't want kids to watch it because right. you know it's an R rating, but still it's a it's a franchise. And right. what, what, I, what I think is crazy is that something like Deadpool is going to be made again under Disney as a, as and that would be like their first Ooh. rated R movie. Yeah, that yeah, yeah that, that would be that, under Marvel Studios. That, yeah. How powerful is that for Deadpool to make Disney do an R rated movie? Well, think about. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just crazy because you think, like, when that came down, like, years ago, when Disney buying out 
you know, movie studios, and then it bought out Marvel. And it's just like, well, well how is that going to work? And I what to me it wasn't so much like on the on the movie side until Deadpool became a thing. It was like, how is that going to work? Because like to me, pretty, pretty good so far. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, but they have like top notch talent. Yeah. At Marvel Studios, I mean, now mind you, I I have a you know like like as far as the movies are concerned, they're they are like really really top notch um but when you go into netflix um i didn't care for uh the iron fist series Mm -hmm. i'm glad they took that off um there was another one too i think that was Uh, my that was my my main one that i really didn't care for like it was it felt like it it, it, it just it, to me what I interpret the character of being was not that it, it made it a lot about him and his decisions and, right and it, it it just there was no adventure to it no no but I liked how like they they were able to set this thing up where it, they dealt with the more of the street level stuff. So like Daredevil, um, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, the Punisher. I loved it. Um, you know, uh, just brought it more kind of down to level. Um, where in a lot of cases they weren't even in any kind of uniform. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, they, yeah. they, they, they didn't wear the uniforms. Like actually that's, kind of like because my wife is not into any kind of geekery at all like she's not really into it so mm-hmm. for like for her to sit down like she the first thing that she she won't she wouldn't do is sit down and watch a uh like a comic book movie or you know like that but i'll tell you what she sat down and she liked the first two seasons of jessica jones like she really enjoyed it. I tried to get her to watch Daredevil, and she wouldn't do it. Uh, but she just didn't care for. I don't know what. Like she, I don't know if she is still, because I think at the end of season one, he kind of comes up with this working outfit that he used. Yeah. And she didn't care for it, and she, I couldn't get her to watch it. But she <laughs> and she watched the first season of Iron Fist, which which I was kind of surprised. I didn't like it. Like. To be to be honest, um, it wasn't like you said. I agree with what you said. Um, the the care and quality in the uh, the storylines and how it was shot was wasn't that great. Um, I mean, I know. I mean, now I mean now I'm speaking that like they. I don't know if they, I know they kind of shut down all of that for you know at one point. Uh, they weren't doing any more Iron Fists, um, you know. A Daredevil, even though that as super as superb as that was, that was kind of uh, shut down. But I think they're going to do a new season. I, I'm maybe talking out of turn, but no, they, they I, did a really good job. I, I think, I think Kevin Feige, the producer at Marvel Studios, right? I, I think he's got plans, and there are, there are yeah. certain things that. He loved about it, and he knows right. that fans, he knows that fans loved certain things too. Right. Um. My my guess is that he wants to, you know, further, you know, and expand the universe even more. Right. You know, with with certain storylines that ha- right. that are kind of next in line to be told. Right. And, and I think like stuff like Daredevil and. And maybe Jessica Jones, you know, is right. they're, part, they're part of those storylines. Right. Mostly, mostly what I'm thinking is uh, uh, the Dark Avenger storyline or the Secret Invasion storyline. Well, I think Which, they were trying to launch the Defenders too, and I don't. And because of the Iron Fist character, I to me it kind of, to me it, in a way, it fell apart. Yeah. I can see because that because they're trying to because they're, they're trying to launch. I remember them trying to do. They I think they did do a Defender show. But it was just kind of really wonky because you have 
look, you have Daredevil, Jessica Jones, I think Luke Cage, Power yeah. Iron, you know, like they, Luke Cage, they were a part of. I think that in this in that iteration, those were the main players, and you have these adults who who are just they, you know, these adults, and I felt like the Iron Fist character was a kid. Yeah, he was. Danny you know what was... I mean? Like, like it, I mean, I understand. Like, he, I don't now, mind you, I don't, I don't, I can't really recall like his origin within, his, like how he was created and everything like that. I want to say he was a teenager, like a like a older teenager when he showed up, but he wasn't like he to me. He was like kind of fully formed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and now, mind you, this is going back to the seventies, so a lot of that, I, I, I mean, obviously, I, I didn't initially read, given to how old I am, but, uh, but that's kind of how I view, you know, Iron Fist. Like, you know, um, you know, you know, the the show with, uh, you know, just this fully formed guy who, you know, is steeped in this, you know, Eastern mysticism and, and th- that kid was not it. Like he was to a certain kind of, to a certain extent, but he was like this manipulatable brat. Right. That, that would have been cool to see, to see, you know, a guy return and, like you know, a fighter, have, have, like a fighter, like somebody have, who you could take seriously as a fighter. Yes. He, you know, he's a little too round faced. There's nothing wrong with that. But like to me, a fighter. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I don't know. Like I said, I you know, I mean, I don't know what, you know, what their intent, what their ideas were, and what they were looking for in the initial onset. You know, and apparently the, the guy who played Iron Fist like had met that kind of that criteria, but you know, come on. The, the, Moon Knight a... would have been a better choice the first offset than than Iron Fist, and oh, I, I think yeah. they're doing the Moon Knight show too, which yep. I'm happy about. Um, and I know he that's kind of a hard it's, that can be considered at times a, a hard character to write. Oh. Um, but there are some great stories. Like I got some collected editions here in my. Uh, my man cave of Moon Knight, like about two or three volumes of it, when they relaunched it. Not the Stephen Platt stuff, but um, I like that stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I I don't remember. I don't think I ever read it. I I knew who he was, like when he when he went to Image, but like I I, I don't remember reading uh, any of it when he was on board. Um, but you know, but yeah, kudos to Marvel Studios. I mean, they're they're talking about launching. Um, it's been officially announced. It will also mix geek like geek culture news too. They've actually officially announced um, a cat the next Captain Marvel movie. Yes, uh, I didn't read too much into that yet today, but no, no, no. I just kind of read it. Um, I don't think there's an, a trailer for it yet. No. Um, so I'm kind of happy about that. Um, not that I saw the movie because <laughs> there's only so many hours in a day. Um, um, I, I heard it came out to really good reviews. Um, my uh, daughter saw it; she really enjoyed it, and her girlfriend they they she really enjoyed it. Cool. Um, have you seen the Morbius uh, trailer yet? I did. Um, what did you think? Um, I I don't know yet. They, it, it seemed a whole lot, you know, of him being turned into the vampire right well and it's telling the origin I, story yeah i i'm fine with an origin story and right. w- with with this character you're gonna need that because not right. everybody knows a whole lot about him right I, i'm i'm really hoping for a lot more vampire and you know not not focusing on on so much him uh you know becoming one or or curing his disease like well, that should be that should be the catalyst. But, well, to yeah. me, like I think so. If you if you look at Morbius's uh, kind of somewhat history in comics, like he's another guy, another character that came out of the seventies. Yep. Uh, kind of fizzled out, and they brought him back uh, in the early nineties. Uh, Ron Wagner drew him, 
that oh, I yeah. can remember. Yeah. Really good book. Um, so he's never really been done in movies at all. So you kind of have to appeal to that because you're going to have to deal with that that aspect of the people who don't know who he is. Is he's a, this obscure Walmart character? Or it's not Walmart. <laughs> it's Marvel, <laughs> Marvel character who like you really don't like a lot of people on on the whole don't know who he is. That's a franchise that they never dealt with outside the Spider-Man stuff. They've dealt with Venom. They've dealt with Carnage. They've never dealt with Morbius. He is the Walmart Dracula, isn't he? <laughs> I, I don't. He may have. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, um. I, I think th- there's an appeal to Morbius. Um, just there will be one, yeah, like on a larger scale, yeah. He's a he's a different type of vampire, right? And, um, it, and it, I I find it interesting that Sony's trying to do that, right? Uh, right. With you know a little bit of obscure characters, but you know that intrigues me a lot too because they're trying to world build Spider Man universe itself too, right. Uh, yeah, but you got to tell that origin story at some point. Um, and with that one, I don't, I don't have a problem with. Um, based upon what I saw in the trailer, the special effects of what they're doing with him are really cool. Um, but I'm hoping that it'll be a, a more of a story-driven versus like a CGI um, effects-driven uh, movie. Uh, I'm hoping for a horror, honestly. I, I well, wanna... yeah. I, I mean, wanna, he is a horror book. I mean, you know, let's let's face it. You know, I I want to jump out of my seat. You know, at right. a couple times, and but but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. Um. Let's talk about uh. What was that? Um. The New Mutants uh, movie that was gonna come out and then it got shelved, and it's coming out again. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen the trailer for that? I I did. Oh man, I wanted to see. I'm not into horror movies at all, but that one. You wouldn't expect New Mutants man. to be like that, yeah. But that be, it works. We, it works. But I mean, what's well, well, the cool thing is, is that like it's like nobody ever saw it like that. Legion, like that character, that guy is like. Uh huh. He's like he's just ridiculously freaking intelligent in. And, you know, it's Xavier's son, but, you know, that could easily be, I mean, he's schizophrenic, I think, wasn't he? Isn't he listed as being, like, schizophrenic, the character uh, itself? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. Doesn't have a firm grasp on reality. Yeah, right? So, you know, um, that kind of made me excited. Like, I, I was really excited, and then, um, and then they shelved it. It was supposed to come out in the fall. And then, um, um, uh, what was I going to say? It was supposed to come out in the fall, like in the fall sometime, mm-hmm. late, like kind of winter. And then it just, you didn't hear anything about it. I, I'm guessing it had to, to do with the, the whole merger of Fox and Disney. You, you think know, that's what it is? It, maybe. E- either they were trying to rush it and trying to get it out and had some good stuff. Right. And, and but they couldn't like finish it off. Right. And I think Okay, uh, so they're saying uh April third is when this movie's supposed to come out. Okay. Um so hopefully, you know uh, uh hopefully we'll we'll get to see it. It looked really I mean it looked really good. Like I I, I wanted to see it when it was supposed to come out initially, but uh I think a uh, lot of people were predicting that this wasn't going to come to theaters and that it was going to be like straight to like Hulu or Disney plus. Right. And, and now when they showed like, you know, a lot of the, 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 the final footage and it, it looks good. So it might actually do, you know, pull something in here. Oh, Hey, check this out. Um, I just came across it. Um, I just looked up Wikipedia it said that it was supposed to have come out in 2018. Oh my god! And then it got pushed back because it conflicted with the Deadpool 2 release. 
Oh, I suppose. Yeah. Um, where did I see that at? Because it still would have been Fox, you know, right. producing it. Right. Um, yeah, it was, and then it got, it, they were supposed to have released it in 2018. It got pushed back. It was supposed to come out in 2019, and it never happened. Uh, and it's set a date set by Disney after it acquired Fox and its assets. So, I mean, that's probably going to play into that too, where it was just, they were waiting for the acquisition to, uh, to, uh, to happen and, and see what they were going to do with it. So what do you think? Is this going to be like uh, a Marvel studios continuity or is this going to be like a standalone by itself well, storyline. So it, to me, what it, the feel of, of a lot of the Marvel studio stuff is that, um, especially with in, in in regards to the movie aspect of it. Now, mind you, the X stuff kind of doesn't fall into the stereotypical like Marvel Studios kind of thing, where they right. set up for this big event. You know, they set there's there's this huge setup for the big Avengers movie and whatever the storyline that they're following. Um, so it's hard to tell. Um, the Apocalypse movie was kind of, it was a little, it looked great. I had a hard time with it because of the way the storyline was. It yeah. was really hard to follow. Like, and I'm not the only one person, like when I, I was watching, we were watching with some friends of ours and the husband and I were really, were, were wanting to see it. And we, we watched it and it was like, we, he and I said the same thing. It was really hard to follow. There's too much going on. Um, I haven't seen the dark, the dark Phoenix stuff. I don't even think it's been released yet. Uh, but um, I'm ho- it may be, or it may be a setup for something else. Because I know there was, wasn't there like some kind of huge uh, storyline with uh, Legion, like back in the day? Um, I gotta be honest. I, I don't remember. Really, I, I never look, watched I, I any of the Legion uh, series at all. I, I oh no! Oh, that was a show, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh hell! It was on Fox, right? Uh, FX, I think. FX, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I know. I know. I haven't seen it either. So I don't know. It, I mean, speaking in regards to like the comic books, I'm not sure if there was an event with him. I thought it was. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Or if they're setting up to do like a mutant massacre type of thing. Could be. You know, it's hard to say. Like, it's still. Uh, we haven't even I'm, seen the movie I'm just yet. wondering if this is going to be like an introduction to mutants into like the Marvel mutants. Marvel universe. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, I don't know. It's hard to say, um, you know, because that was the New Mutants was a lot of the uh, up and coming, uh, you know, supposedly future like X Men. Yeah, X Men: The Next Generation. Yeah, and I mean back in the '80s, so it's really hard to say like what they're gonna like what they're going to do they're taking i mean they're 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 doing it kind of up as a kind of a horror kind of a thing which is cool it's different so i i guess it's it's waiting on to see what kind of reaction they're going to have because you're dealing with some characters that have never been dealt with before wolf's bane you know uh who else i i gotta say colossus's sister iliana as magic looks really good they yeah rain they hit it yeah uh yeah, Eliana Rasputin. Um, um there Sam Guthrie, the cannonball. Yeah. He's a newer yep. acquisition. He, oh no, he's not. I'm sorry, he's not. Um Somebody's Cecilia playing Sunspot. Reyes. Uh Danielle Moonstar. Yeah, and then um yeah, Sunspot. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see. Like, I can't wait to see it. I don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, maybe it's going to be standalone, or it's going to be its own kind of uh, sequence of films that aren't a part of the mainline Marvel U- universe kind of thing. Uh, X the X universe, since that's still not. Uh, I think that's still Sony's still kind of doing the X Men stuff uh, for for now. I mean, because I thought that would have reverted to. Uh, Disney when it acquired Sony, but apparently that doesn't work that way. Yeah, uh, which is kind of weird because there were there's some movies, there's storylines that would be interesting as to be done as movies. Uh, so I guess we it's got to be brought up too. Um, 
and listen to the interview with uh, Robert Downey Jr. on the Joe Rogan podcast. And he's now, I think he, he it's it's looking like he's going to be, he, he like he's stepping down from doing Iron Man. Well, uh, yeah. It, we're not. I mean, it's kind of. I kind of. I. I don't know if it was still kind of up in the air, like with him, uh, if he wanted to. Do, I mean, it sounded like he. He. He's stepping down from it, but he may or may not do it in the future. Um, he, I think maybe uh, he wanted to see like how Doctor Doolittle might do. Like, it, oh, does yeah. he still have star power outside of Marvel? Right. And I. I don't think Doolittle mm-hmm. did the best. No, that's what my understanding was the the the, the ratings were uh, not so great. Yeah. Um. So but it's still it would still really be up to to Robert Downey if he wanted to, you know, come back to that or if he's well, wanted to try try different see, things. I but think. also too, I mean, I understand being an actor. I mean, he because he's like the actor's actor. Let's just be honest of of our of our generation. Oh yeah. Like he is. He's a consummate actor, very professional, done a lot of a great work. My thing is, is that there is one storyline. If he, if I could get him to come back and do one storyline. Ooh, what is it? Demon in the bottle. He's never done it. They never touched on it, uh, to my knowledge, within the, the Iron Man movies that I saw. They never touched on the demon in the bottle. No. No, not really. And that would be fantastic. Uh- there were hints of that, like in the first one, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, with the alcoholism, yeah, 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 yeah. But he, like, that would be to me the ultimate. Like, if if I can get him to come back and they do a demon in the bottle storyline, because that was such a profound storyline back in the day, dealing with alcoholism. Um, and I think he. Now l- let's just be honest. Everybody from here on forth. They're going to think Iron Man and they're going to think, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Any artist, that's who they're going to have in their head when they draw him. Mm-hmm. Much, much aligned to Kurt Swan with Paul Newman when he drew Superman. Yeah. So that's always going to be there. To me, it would be a proper send off if he could do that one last movie you know with the stipulation of it like let's say let's not let's say let's not tie it into any kind of big event let's set it up to where at the tail end of i don't know some movie it becomes a problem like the alcohol uh, the alcohol uh, the alcoholism becomes the severe problem for him mm-hmm. and he you know whatever it takes a step down from the Avengers, whatever it is, like how, you know, like I'm just, I'm just talking out of, you know, I'm just talking, but you know, something like that, like don't necessarily, you don't necessarily make need to make it a big event, make it this just artistic movie because he could pull it off. He's had his, I mean, publicly his, his fair share of, 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 of a demon in the bottle, so to speak. You know, the lowest of lows, you know, like, you know, as an addict, and I don't know if he was never an alcoholic, but he was an addict. Yep. He could do it. And I think he's strong enough to do that, like, where it wouldn't affect him too much. Mm. Um, you know, it's just something to think about. Like, you know, I would like to see him come back and do one last movie uh, as Iron Man. After that, do whatever you want, you know, like I'm saying. But he's a brilliant actor, like, you know, very, very well spoken. And they talked about that at length, about the Marvel U universe movies and stuff like that. And uh, what Favreau did with him, you know, it was, that guy, I don't think that guy can do no wrong. No, he I mean, uh, I blindly follow him through through you know the valley of jagged rocks or something you know right (laughs) (laughs) knees bleeding like your hand the palms of your hands i'll follow you wherever you go he uh, he 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 changed the landscape and still does right uh, i don't know I, i don't know if it's it's just he has you know that 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 perfect vision of right. what people are looking for or right. or or what or if he just right. 
you know, he, he has that many right people, you know, with him, but my gosh. Right. It, watching the Mandalorian, I'm, I'm Oh. I'm, oh my god. He that 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 show, like I wanna do um like a, a, a Star Wars specific one and I'll probably bring um one of my friends in on it because he's a big Star Wars nut. Uh, a guy that I work with to okay. be a part of it. Um, he's, dude, he's been like, <laughs> he is such a Star Wars nut. He's been to that whole like Star Wars thing at Disneyland like yeah, twice. Said. Yes, he's been yeah. twice. The second time he went, he pulled like you can get like the crystals for lightsabers. Yeah. Oh, he don't got, tell me. Don't he tell me. He got V1. That's black, like one in a hundred you pull this. And he's black. got like, yes, he's got oh one. Oh my gosh. He, are yeah. you serious? Oh. No, I'm dead serious. I'll have to have him tell you the story. But yeah, he, he's got it. He's also okay. got like two of those, um, not, they're not, or I don't know, the, the BB-8 units yeah. that you can custom build there. He's got two of them. And the <laughs> next time they, him and his wife go down, he'll, he's going to build a lightsaber with that crystal. Oh my it, it's really cool. Like I said, I, I'll have to. I, I have plans of bringing him in on that one, and we'll do a larger kind of thing where we go into uh, facets of the Mandalorian and stuff like that. Because I know that that to me, Star Wars is at an interesting time uh, in their franchise right now. At a very, very interesting much. time. So, but we'll save that to the other one. Um, yes. But yeah, but Favreau can do no wrong, and like he's he's knocking it out of the park with. The, the Marvel stuff, the Marvel movies, um, he's not going to, I mean, he's just, he could do no wrong. Like, to me, he could do no wrong. Um, so, uh, but how long is he going to be able to do that? Uh, uh, yeah, it really depends on him. Right, you know, exactly. You know, like, what, like, what, what do you, you know, what is it for him, you know? Um, so, but yeah, Favreau could, like, yeah, that guy is brilliant, like. He's just brilliant. Like I watched him on. Uh, he has a show on Netflix called The Chef, The Chef Show. Yeah. He did that movie with uh, Sophia. I can't think of her name. I don't even think her name is Sophia. Anyway, uh, he did that movie where he plays this like the chef that like he just top notch chef and he winds up going to a food truck and he re, like rebuilds his, his you know his stature and stuff like that it's a really fun movie to watch cuz in the end he's got a son and he actually learned how to cook like a professional chef and there was a guy that worked with him that his story was similar to the movies so when the movie stopped he stopped cooking with him so he wanted to cook with him again so they did they this is cooking series and he brings Actually, big name guests. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I've seen a couple of them. Yeah, they're great. Well, he did one where they were eating, and then, like Robert Downey Jr. was at the table. The kid who's playing Spider Man, yeah. it, it was there too, and how he got that call and what it was like for him. Like it was really cool. But like he I, can legit. He's got like legit professional chef skills. It, it blows my mind. Like it's like wow. I, I loved that 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 episode because you saw Tom Holland, and right. I think it's it, it's just him starting out to be, you know, Spider Man. Right. And he he's meeting all these people, and he's just a he's just a kid, and he's just like a deer in headlights. He he, uh, I think he was like stuttering and and didn't know how to how to speak at certain points. And right. Oh yeah, kind of like kind of like how I feel right now with the. You know the first inaugural show here, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. like, well, no, and he—you could see how he looked at Robert Downey Jr. It was like hero worship. Yeah, like here's this kid from 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 London, who never thought he was going to be there. No, like never thought like, he wanted to act. He act whatever, but like to be at that table and to be at with one of the best actors. Uh, like, I mean, and there's a lot of great actors, but like to be the best actor like just blows my mind like you know like just blew his mind like he's, you could see how he looked at him it's just like 
well, I'm sitting at a table with Robert, you know, like, you know, he acted with him, and he still had that look on his face, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it was kind of cool um, to be, you know, like, that he's he's that way that he can function in these different things and do these different things and interact with all these people that he interacts with. Uh, but, yeah, Pharaoh is fantastic. Um, there was... That's my dog. Oh, okay. I thought you thought you had an implosion of some sort. No, my dog <laughs> is... Uh, is it a full moon there? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I turned into a werewolf. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, my, we, I have a, we have a dog. His name is uh, Snow, and he uh, is a very interesting dog to own. And he, if is he, is he hyper? Well, no, he's older now. Ah. He um. No, he's he's got he's uh he's a cool dog, but he's like a he's he's kind of a, a, a kind of a strange guard dog. So I don't have like if I leave the house, I know this is, is, is an aside. I, like when I leave the house, I don't have to worry about anybody coming in here. Oh, like cool. if Sherry's here, I don't have to worry about that. Like he's not trained that way. He's just naturally wired that way, and he. he he, there's some things that he went through uh, that kind of that this is what kind of like some one of the better turnouts. But I, I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. He'll, he'll guard my he'll guard my wife. He'll he'll guard my grandkid. Not that we can have her around him. Like he'll guard the house. Cool. But if I am laying down on a couch or if I'm in a recliner chair, I have to be sitting upright. Because oh, this is so funny. So if I get up and we had moments where like snow was in our, our, our bedroom with us, if I got up and I'm like getting ready for work or whatever, moving around, whatever, I could come and go and he does not bother me all day long. Okay. If 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 my if my wife leaves the area like, let's say she's got to go to the bathroom. And she leaves the area and she comes back in. He's short of, like, wanting to take her head off. And I didn't train him this way. Like, nobody trained. Like, he's just naturally this way with me. Really? Yes. So it's the craziest thing ever. Like, I've never seen anything like it. Like, yeah, like, if I'm laying down, you cannot come near me. Or even in within the same like area, like he won't allow it. He's super protective of of you, then. Well, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, he, his is a larger story to tell too, but and I don't want to. I mean, but yeah, so he and he's got some um, personality uh, quirks that we have to be super careful of when he's around other people, like unlike normal dogs, because uh, those are things that took place with him. Ah. Uh, that I, I'm not ready. I don't want to speak to right now. Uh, but he's he's a good dog generally. But like he's if if he doesn't know you, he 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 doesn't want you around. And we have to be careful on how like we, we introduce him to people. Like right. I have a friend of mine who is a former. Or he was a uh, in the navy as a uh, as a seal. The greatest dude, gentlest guy on the planet. And he was coming. He came over to the house because he does like. I like how like home repairs that I can't do, and uh, Snow got out of the front door, and Snow like he's got still because he was dude, Snow was kind of like who are you and like barking and circling around him, but like he was like, just short of like charging him to to, to take him to the ground. <laughs> Sherry calls him in like just like Snow get in here and he he calmed down and you know came. You know, came inside, and then we put him somewhere till, you know, he calmed down, and we could accumulate him to, you know, to my to my friend of mine. But it was that was crazy. Like, yeah, there's some crazy moments with him. But anyway, uh, when you hear the dog, that's snow. Um, oh. But anyway, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> uh, so. Um, all right, so uh, enough. Let's enough of this uh, Marvel talk. How do how do you feel about the new uh, Pattinson? 
being the new Batman. Now, this is really okay. preliminary because we haven't seen a trailer yet, I don't right. think. Right. Um, we have it. We've seen maybe some stills. Uh, I don't know if drawn, but like some stills of him in the costume. Uh, what it, what is the what is the the take on that? Um, I know the the general consensus of Robert Pattinson is kind of negative, you know, because yeah. Twilight it was it was it was a it was a chick flick with vampires, right? And, oh, and God, he was, was he was meant to be he was meant to be the heartthrob, you know, right. at the center of all of it, right? I get that. I never. I. I. I hard. I could. I could not watch those movies. You know. I. I gave it a, a fair chance. I. Oh. I couldn't watch them. I had to sit through the first one. And it was. I. It was brutal. Meanwhile, in the same movie theater, um, one of my sons was seeing the new James Bond film at the time, and I was. I was so. I was like. I would have rather been much water watching that than this. Like it was so <laughs> brutal. <laughs> the, the looking at each other. Well, anyway, there's a lot of people who like that movie, so I don't want to or that series, and I don't want to mess with it too much. But well, um, but you know, and that's the thing too. Like that, that that sad. He did a a movie, and I don't remember the name of the movie. My wife and I watched it, where it was like, I don't know if it was like a post or like a nine eleven kind of a movie. Where he played in it, and he was he was really good. Like it wasn't that teeny bopper kind of you know you know you know thing. Like it wasn't that. It like he really acted. Hmm. Um, so I don't. I mean, he 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 looks good. I don't know what they're planning on doing with him. I guess it's something that we're gonna have to see. Um, well, but I I know they were kind of like that with Affleck. But to me, Affleck was I liked it. Yeah, no, I liked Affleck. Um, but, uh, it was a little, it was different because it was that take of like the older Batman, like uh, Dark Knight Returns, right? That had that feel. It, it, was, to it. it was where he was feeling, you know, overwhelmed and and kind of tired, and he 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 had already built up a lot of his arsenal, you know, and right. such. But right, he he knew he had it. He couldn't just be the Batman to to stop whatever was coming, he right? To, he, and he needed more more you know allies. So right. Um. Yeah. It, now, from what I see, is that um the movie that Robert Pattinson is going to star in is called The Batman. So I I kind of have a feeling like this is going to be like another origin story. So, I don't know if he, I don't know why it is that they got to they got to keep telling it. Well, we only got I mean, one real origin story with Batman Begins. Oh, with with Christopher Bale. Yeah. Chris, yeah, Christopher Bale. Excuse me, not Christopher. Christopher Bale. Um. Well, I mean, but what about the Michael Keaton one? It would be a lot like that one, yeah, because the public doesn't know about Batman that much, and that was kind of an introduction. Right. You know, I see, I like, let's see, um, I don't know how it is that, like, in a franchise, now, understandably, like, I don't know how many years have been since, like, the last um, iteration of the Christian Bale Batman movie was. It's been a while. Two thousand eight. Uh, okay, two thousand eight. No, 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 So no. what? Twelve years later. No, two thousand eight was when Dark Knight came out. Dark Knight Rises was, gosh. Yeah. Twenty twelve. I don't know. Okay, so there's some years down the line, right? Yeah. So you're not you're not really necessarily looking at like a generational thing. True. So you have that, then you have Ben Affleck's Batman, and he didn't get a standalone movie. It was all tied into Superman and the Justice League. Mm-hmm. Right? So you're like, what? Maybe like a, a decade or, or, or change over from 
you know, the la- the Christian Bale Batman, and you still need to tell like your iteration of the origin story or have it be some part of the movie because you have to you feel the need that you have to explain you have to explain why he is this way i've read batman i mean i know me i've read batman for a long time like that was my first comic book yeah um that i that i can recall that i picked out i'm like i want that one uh, alongside with Captain Zoo, uh, Captain Carrot and the Amazing Zoo Crew. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Um, so I, I read them like not like at that at that age. It wasn't like I was going to this to the drugstore or whatever. Like every you know whatever every every month. But I read them, especially when I got into a point where like I, I you know I really got into comic books. That was the my, my main stay. That was one of one of my my mainstays that I always consistently read like Batman Detective Comics, just about always. Like there, I didn't care who the artist writer team was because they usually grabbed the best guys in the business that they had. That's true. At t- in, in what I can remember of the stories that I read, they never like sometimes they there was never even hit on like his origin story or why he was the way he was. Or what caused him to be the way he was? Like there was, it wasn't there. So why? So why is it that like you have because you, the director's different, and you have to tell just tell the story. We everybody knows his parents got shot. Spoiler: like his parents are dead. They is they were both shot. Like he grew up with the butler. Like okay, can we move on? <laughs> it, uh, I mean. I, I look like okay. Let's now all aside from Gotham because Gotham was brilliant. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think it's still on the air anymore. No. Gotham was brilliant, and I I watched like maybe the first two seasons of that, and meant to watch it later, but then I I just for whatever reason that was a brilliant show, and I understood how they had to tell that because that was kind of like, but that was the basis of the storyline where they never really reverted back to it because Bruce was having all these things and interactions with people. You know, uh, Commissioner or not Jim Gordon, same thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they they did it at first, touched on it, and then moved on. Why can't we do that? Why can't I... we have like like like? Okay, so I remember reading when they launched Legends of the the Legends of the Dark, not Legends of the Dark Knight. It was a Legends of the Dark Knight, a Legends of Batman. Yeah. Okay. Mid nineties. Right. They told an aspect of his origin story, not so much like starting from the death of his parents, but when he roamed the earth. Type oh, of a he, thing. Yeah. And it was when it was initially training. set to be a miniseries. Yeah, what he when yeah. he was initially set to be a miniseries, but then they launched it into um what it became. Brilliant, brilliant book. Brilliant idea. Let's do that. Let's not like, but I don't understand how it is. I mean, I, I get it. Like, you kind of want to go. You, you want to have this basis. You don't need to start from the origin. This is the story. Just, just throw them into the story. Yeah. There isn't this need unless you, let's say, you want to do a different take with the Joker, which I don't know how you could do that now. Oh gosh, no. Because look. Heath Ledger, in everybody's mind, and with this within this generation, that is everybody's Joker. Yeah. Not Jared Leto. Oh, definitely not that anymore. You know what I mean? That got underutilized, but you know, whatever. Uh, it was. It's gonna be Heath Ledger. And he even even uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, he said it in a speech in at an award show. He goes like, he wanted to thank uh, his friend and fellow actor Heath Ledger for letting him stand on his shoulders, right? For, and doing this movie, right? So, yeah, it there there won't be another decent Joker, you know, to well, yeah. 
to rival I, Batman again. No, kind of not 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 in that manner, and not that way that it was done in in the Christian Bale iteration of Batman. No, I mean, plus, let's let's think about it. They had a Batman writer writing that movie. Uh, David S. Goyer. No. I think. No. Oh, which everybody which forgets. Everybody forgets that he wrote Batman at one point. Christopher Nolan. Really? Go look it up. I'll lay money on it. Christopher Nolan wrote Batman, and if I remember correctly, he wrote issues of the whole the, of like the Knights Fall, like that. The whole you know that Batman thing. He was one of the writers. Hmm. I I I I I lay money down that he that he that he did he was a Batman writer and he was considered a Batman writer for a lot of years that he broke into movies. That's cool. Yeah. So you need that. I don't necessarily say get, get Christopher Nolan. He's told his Batman story. And he's I think he's even said it too to a degree. I've told my Batman story on yeah. film. I don't need yeah. to do that again. But let's get I don't know. Let's be whimsical. Who would you get for a Batman writer? Oh, let me think. Uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, I set myself up to be brilliant and I fall. Uh, <laughs> you have his autograph. Uh, uh, uh. I have a lot of autographs. Uh, no, no, the la- the one from the last show you went to. Scott Snyder. Get him to write it. Yes. Because, look, I could deal with them telling, like, how they did the new, like, the Court of Owls thing. Like, that was that was brilliant. Like, what they did to relaunch Batman, like, that was freaking brilliant. Court of Owls, Night, you know, Court of Owls, Night of Owls, like, that was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that, to me, was just top-notch storytelling and artistry at its best. Scott Snyder and uh, Greg Capullo, you can't you can't lose with that that combination at all. Still doing stuff together too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You should. Um, if you ever get a chance, um, uh, Fat Man on Batman. Um, it's the podcast that um, Kevin Smith initially launched to do a podcast just on Batman driven. Yeah. Love I that. think it's within the first. 10 episodes he does an interview with Scott Snyder when he it was just him it's not this other guy they got what it was just it, he had a, an interview with Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo I think at one, at the same time I think or separately I remember being together but I don't remember why it was brilliant because if you heard like some of the stuff that Greg was talking about like the, the like this when he was like the when he was working on Spawn and stuff like that, you would have, I, I never knew. Like, and I, I mean, I never knew. And there weren't any kind of magazines like that anymore where they were kind of industry insiders type of stuff like Wizard was. There wasn't any of that. It, like, mm. he, like, yeah, like, to hear his story is, like, nothing but, like, oh, wow. Like, it, it's something like it like for i mean it scott's is really really inspiring too but it's kind of funny because like there was this like they they talked about like you know here's scott and then here's greg like you know and like you know you know and, and greg's like this big dude you know and it's like it, it is just like this kind of like juxtaposition like he didn't think that they're gonna be able to like i think it was scott thought that they weren't gonna be able to work together <laughs> And apparently, when Scott got a script, like I, I and I, I, I'm not, I mean, I, I may be getting some of the, the details wrong, but like what when Greg got Scott's script, he's like, "You don't need to do that." <laughs> and then, like, change it kind of changed it on him. Like, I mean, like I said, I, 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 I mean, it was a while ago when I heard it. Brilliant, brilliant, freaking interviews, like both of them. Um, and another one that I really enjoyed. Actually, there's four. That one. Um, he did an interview with Mark Hamill. Have you heard that one? No, no. Mark Hamill did the Joker. Oh, I have to get and, that one. 
And and the thing was is that he didn't video like Kevin didn't videotape any of those first ones. Oh no. He goes, you should he goes, man, like how Kevin Smith does. He's just like, man, he turned into the Joker doing that. And he goes, I he goes, there's part of me wish that I had a camera to see that, but I wouldn't he wouldn't have gotten that kind of response out of Mark Hamill. I suppose not. I mean, no, like you think about it, you know, you're usually not going to cut loose like that with a camera in front of you. Um, and that was right around the time, I guess, when he, that was before they announced that they were going to do the killing joke. Oh, okay. And that's Mark Hamill's last Joker performance. He yeah. goes, if I could do that, I could lay it down. And there was like a fan petition, I think. Like, yeah, it was crazy. I haven't seen it yet, but. Um, that was that was crazy. That was a good one, and another one that was really good was the one with Neil Adams. Oh boy! Because it, it's kind of it's kind of known that he's he can be very very cantankerous in a handful. Yeah. And uh, a brilliant brilliant interview. Like talked about how he got started drawing and you know all of that. Like it was another brilliant interview too. Which, you know, leads me to tell this story. So, was it the first one we went to? Or the oh, second? here it comes. Here it comes. Gosh. <laughs> so, what, so, Philip earlier mentioned that, like, he, I introduced him to quite a bit of, like, you know, writers and, and, and illustrators and just books. So, at the time, Philip didn't really necessarily know who Neil Adams was, and I did. Um, based upon the fact that he did Batman. I think at that point he had um, continuity comics. Right. Um, you know, uh, just brilliant, brilliant writer, a creator. And uh, I was walking around. I don't I don't know where Phil was initially. I think we were kind of like separated off. We would run into each other. And I ran into Neil. I saw, the, I saw that it was Neil Adams. I'm like, oh, I got to go talk to this guy. And I was talking to him. I don't remember what about. He was really nice, which is crazy. After what I learned later on, I'm like, oh, I caught him on a good day. Um, <laughs> and I it just I was jazzed because he's like, oh, my God, Neil Adams. Like, you know. Right. And, uh, and well, so uh, go ahead. Oh, go no. ahead. This is great because you got to tell your side of it. OK, so I, I see you talking to a guy at a booth and I see continuity comics. I'm like, OK, I, I'm not giving it. The, the respect that it deserves whatsoever because it isn't it isn't Marvel it isn't DC right and you know there's some other comic companies at the time like Image Dark Horse Valiant it wasn't any of those it was Continuity Comics it it was what Neil had started himself correct right yeah he was yeah he was one of the first guys to kind of do that yeah well yeah big name big name guys yeah so. Yeah. I, I don't see anybody around the booth whatsoever except Jason. I'm like, okay, hey, Jason, let's go stand in line and get, like, you know, Rob Liefeld's autograph or something. Right, and, yeah. You know, I let, remember let's that, hurry yeah. up. We, 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 you we know, can he, make it. We had we the can whole make day. It. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and you're, you're like, you're like, Phil. Do you know who this is? <laughs> Neil Adams. I'm like, oh, hey. How's it going, man? <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Oh, you're like, yeah, you could have cared less. Oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay. I'm like, and and then you you smack me on the side of the head. I remember that. I'm like, right, yeah. Bill, it's yeah. Neil Adams, Batman. You you know? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm yeah, tr- okay. Let's I'm, go get. I'm let's reaching, go to line. <laughs> I'm I'm reaching for some sort of compliment I can give this guy, and right. he's. And and I see him looking at me, and he's got that that kind of that that grin, like this right, guy has yeah. no idea, but it's who, funny. Who the hell I am, yeah. This other kid's freaking out, yeah. <laughs> and he looks at Jason, and and he's like, "It's okay." <laughs> right, yeah. Well, because it was kind—I mean, like that was kind of like it was interesting because, like, it was just one of those moments, right? Like, you know, I got to meet. Oh my a God. hero. Yeah, I got to meet my I got to meet one of my heroes, and it was just like I was so excited, and the, like he, I could have gotten a more reverse, <laughs> reverse like thing from you that that like a polar opposite reaction from you than I ever expected, 
and you were so great because you were just like you could have cared less. You're like it was because that was the first one because Rob Liefeld was really hard to find. Another story for another time, and uh, yep. it just could have cared less. And he's just like, I who who why do I care? Like uh, it was great. Like yeah, I remember that. And I actually got to meet um, Gardner Fox too, I believe. Oh okay. Um, and I think I have his signature somewhere because I think I got him to sign a card. I don't remember. I don't remember getting anything from Neil. Just the fact that I got to shake his hand and, and you know, blow, poke up his butt. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, but that's just what it is for. It was just, you know, this geeky fi- fandom stuff. Like, oh my God. But, um, yeah, well, but, you know, because, you go ahead. Oh, at, at the time, you know, Image was the biggest oh, story. Oh, man. Um, you know, the story that- alone is just incredible. Like, there was something that was said, and I don't remember in what, in what, in who, in what the context was, but somebody had kind of said, asked something of Neil Adams or something, and the comment of, you know, the guys that you have to be to be aware of are the children of Neil Adams. So you have Jim Lee, you have, you know, all those guys. And, you know, not, not only did Neil Adams draw Batman and, and all these great characters. He actually got DC to formally recognize Simon and Schuster as the creators of Superman. Really? You don't know the story behind that? I um, maybe we I maybe we a little may bit. have to delve into it. I may have to do research on that one. You but Neil Adams talks about it in the podcast with Kevin Smith. And he like what it took for him and it would in and neil's very very like very very business minded very very intelligent like figured out how to do it and it took some time but they finally got recognized and i remember the interview with kevin smith he asked if he would have done the same thing for dick sprang who uh was one of the um original uh Dick Spring. I think he was a, a Batman writer or artist. I don't I think it was a writer. And he never got like actually, believe it or not, all those guys that worked on the early Batman books never got credit. That, that never got creator credit. Except right. Bob Kane. Bob Bob made sure. Which is it which is a story for another time. Like, yeah, oh yeah. Like I after I read that book, I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know. But then when I saw the documentary about um Bill Finger. Uh, Bill Finger. Bill Finger? Is it Bill Finger that I saw? The one where they got, like, the the son or the grandson? Yep. Yep. That's the one. I saw yeah. that, too. Yeah. Oh, man. I was crying at the end of that one. Oh, I know. Actually, actually that was the one. That, no, it was Bill Finger. Yeah. He asked if he would have done it for Dick Springer, Bill Finger, and he, he said no. He had a reason why. That I, that I don't remember right now, but oh god, yeah that that documentary. If you want to see something that will like, you'll have tears in your eyes over just the crazy, insane stuff that went on in comic books back in that day. Watch that documentary, and you will see one of the unsung heroes of Batman that never got the credit that he deserved. Very true. I, I, so, god, right. what was the name of that? Uh... I will have to look that up because I don't, I don't, by this point, I don't, I don't remember it, <laughs> not because of memory. I watched it like one time and about one time was about all I could do because it was just, it, at the end it was so, uh, it was really, really cool, but it was like really, really sad because in certain instances, um, like they, people didn't like, it was nuts. Like it starts off the guy who did it, uh, the guy who did the documentary um um oh, I'm blanking uh the guy who did the documentary as a kid was introduced to Bill Finger yes at a comic book convention uh, I think in San Diego when it was in the basement yeah uh, um like he was there with an editor or of some sort you know right, sitting yeah. at, at a bar like hey do you- meet somebody who created Batman and, and 
and he's thinking Bob Kane, and it wasn't Bob Kane. It was uh, let me, uh, I think it's called Batman on Bill, and it was on Hulu. It's probably still there. Go yeah. watch it. Oh, it's just so good. Like I mean, for comic book history, like that's so good. Like just, uh, just how the, a lot of those artists and writers back in that day with the exception of a very, very few selected few, they got like just shafted. Mm -hmm. Like it was just work and you were paid and you know, you goodbye. Like, um, like one of the guys I think that was able to walk out of it was the guy who created, uh, and it's considered Andy and I can't remember the name of the book. I don't that know. was comic book strips too. Man, I'll have to look that up. I'll have to talk about that another time. But yeah, like yeah. there, it's just a lot of stuff. Like you know, you couldn't, you couldn't go after them at that time. It was just considered work. You may or may not have signed a contract that was legit. Really sad because I remember talking to my dad about a lot of that back then, and he was just like, "Well, that's they were paid to do that." Yeah, yeah, very true. So. You know, it, yeah, the the documentary is called Batman and Bill. Yeah, that, that, that's that's what it's called. So right, yeah, yeah. Um, how about in this podcast we like give our like recommendations? You know, for for actually any there's a couple things I wanted to I wanted to hit on before we got out of here. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we have to mention, and now mind you, I know it's more of a music thing, and I, I'm want to do i'm in the i'm trying to get a music podcast launched as well um that uh about music but strictly music and guitars and stuff like that because i do that as well cool. uh, that um neil pert passed away the drummer for rush yeah um writer musician um just artist um really I just a uh, just what a loss I mean mind you he's like he was 67 years old and he quietly fought cancer for years um, there and again I want to do this I, I'm talking about more of like the the literary side of it and there's a comic book thing that I was going to bring up but just what a loss um, great, just a great storyteller uh, great with words, uh, who died of uh, so a form of brain cancer, um, who wrote books. And a lot of people, you know, some people don't know that he was a, an author as well. Yeah, I did not know that. And he uh, and he uh, wrote a lot, some nonfiction stuff, really good stuff. I mean, I was telling you about it. Um, just travel more travel kind of thing um he was also and i read it on uh, uh, comic book resource that he was i know i think i was maybe kindly aware of it but when they came out with the record Co clockwork angels he was doing a book that he was working with kevin kevin anderson kevin j anderson the author okay he did uh star wars books and stuff like that he was they were both working on this book and neil he didn't think that Neil was going to make it until the book was finished. So he <laughs> planned a trip. He planned a trip to go see him. And, you know, they, you know, they hung out and they had lunch and went back to Neil's, uh, I don't remember what he called it, but like his man, his version of a man cave. And, uh, they, uh, they were talking and like Neil's like, so what brings you into town? And Kevin's like, in the type of personality he had, like he, Kevin kind of told him, well, you know, you have to go read, go, go look up the story because it's brilliant. He's like, well, uh, I came here to see you, Neil. And he couldn't process it. It's just, I mean, even before the, the cancer, he couldn't process why somebody would just come and see him, like just to do that. Like nothing tied to it, like just to come and do that. And uh, he get, that was the last time he saw him alive, and he wasn't doing; he was getting tired and everything else. But go read the articles on Comic Book Resource. Uh, um, and then uh, another article that I read afterwards um, was there is a reference of Ru an issue of the Defenders that was dedicated to Rush. Yep. 
where uh, Doctor Strange turned into um, Sanjar the Red, something like that. Right, some sort of like demon. Right, um, the Sultan kind of a thing. Yeah. And apparently the the, the issue the, the issue was dedicated towards the members of Rush, and the demons started spouting off like twenty one twelve kind of like uh, uh, like content like kind of content. Um, if you if you've never heard that that song, uh, it's a long song, but it's brilliant. Like the whole song, the lyrical content to the music is just brilliant. <laughs> It it just you know and it spouts off like stuff from twenty one twelve but there was a comic book I don't remember who wrote it um, or who drew it but it, it, they were they really liked Rush and they dedicated the issue to him so uh, that was kind of neat to see um, like I said I don't I don't want to get too much into the music because I want to kind of keep them somewhat separate uh, given to um, people that are going to have it involved they may not be into they're not into they may not be into comic books but they're more music minded mm-hmm. uh, but what a loss um, so rest in peace Neil uh, I hope you're uh, you know you're you're somewhere uh, you know uh, in a better place than here that's yeah it. a better place than here for sure uh, but yeah if you yeah uh, I think I want to say that was it because I had some stuff that like I saved articles from to bring up and I couldn't even tell you where I put them because hmm. in certain instances I am a Luddite. Um, you know what? Uh, that's probably a good stop. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll probably yeah we'll have to start we'll, we'll wrap this up because I'm sure you got stuff to do and. Um. Yeah, I gotta make supper. Uh, oh shit! What's well, kind? Of, what's well, six? Well, about seven o'clock where you are, right? It, yeah, it's just about seven. Okay. So, nah. Yeah. I I I am the head head cook in my household. And... You are? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have to. Really? Wait a minute. Doesn't doesn't your wife like do that for a living? She, when you do something for you know for your work, does that does that joy still come home to? Does that joy resonate okay. when you come home? All right. Yeah, All right, exactly. my bad. Okay, <laughs> I, I got you. Yeah. Oh no, I understand. Okay, <laughs> like this chef doesn't want to make the gourmet meal at the house. Would exactly. rather just put their feet up and eat frozen pizza, maybe. Uh, that, yeah. That's my. That might be what it'll be tonight too. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I got like cold Chinese food that Sherry picked up for me earlier. So, but. Uh, Ooh, but other than stuff. No, it's not. Listen, I don't need to eat Chinese. I, like, okay, I like Chinese food. I grew up eating like, like Chinese food, like well, Asian food, like because of my dad. You're like, Scottish, though, right? Well, Scottish and German. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Like, yeah, one day we'll have to delve into my freaking heritage and we'll, like what I grew up at. Like, yeah, it was really nuts. Um, we uh, we uh. My dad made it like he like he a walk and everything, and uh, I I I'm okay with it. Like I kind of like I I kind of I kind of mess with it from time to time, but I get frustrated. Yeah. So um, my my dad just whips stuff up like sauces and, and like it just pisses me off. But anyway, so we typically eat it like as like takeout, and I'm getting tired of it because it's like all the same crap. Like there's nothing wrong. Like sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's really bad, but it's the same menu. So you could get like you know I don't know gung pao chicken, or you know General Zo, you know chicken. Yeah. You know it's the same. The menus are the same, and it's like all. Oh, and sometimes it's not even like Chinese people making it. Right. It's become an American Chinese. Right. Yeah. Well, not only that. There's an interesting documentary, by the way, called um, I don't remember what it's called. I'll have to remember it for next time. But there was a documentary that was that that brought up about like how Asian cuisine came into American mm-hmm. food, yeah, it came into America, whatever. They talked about um, General Zhou's chicken. Yeah, that was the name of the, they, the documentary. That was that. Thank you. Um, and so what they find out 
through all this travel of trying to figure out where this ditch originated from, there was an actual General Zhou in China, but it wouldn't have been something that he would have ate. No. And it comes out of, like, Malaysia? Do you remember, like, Thailand, Malaysia? Something like that. Yeah, in that area of the world. And then there's then there is conflicting stories about the broccoli, the piece of broccoli. Right. So it's uh, not Chinese, even though everybody thought it was Chinese. It's not Chinese. I, I think it was like the like the, the dish became popular in like Taiwan or something like that. And yeah, it, it's it, Taiwanese. It, it, yeah. It, it was it was a chef like a celebrity chef of some sort, right. and like he right. had kind of come up with it, but like. It, it, Right. Like somebody requested that they had add broccoli to it, and they did, and it like kind of stuck that way or something like that. I don't know. Right. right. But it, an interesting. It fact, was really weird. It's funny. It was funny. <laughs> an interesting fact, Jason, and the, you probably didn't notice this. Yes. But they what? were, um, the the guy who was doing the documentary was traveling around right. to to different, uh. Uh, older style Chinese uh, restaurants, uh, you know, kind of right, kind of going back. And for a brief second, I saw it. They had the House of China from La Crosse, which is nearby with Sparta, Wisconsin. What they, they that's showed a picture right, of it. that's right. Yeah, I remember that picture too. I would have never associated with that. I, w- I wouldn't have. And it's funny because they don't cook that. Like, there's one thing that I would really, really like to eat. And I kind of e- have eaten it. But it was like uh, in the frozen section, uh, P.F. Chang's meal. It's called, it's a noodle dish. Um, Dan Dan. It's a spicy noodle dish. It's really good. It's just, I mean, I don't know if you're going to find that stuff in Sparta, Wisconsin. I'm not making fun of you, but, you know. No. But then again, no, it's the, all the, the face here now. Bernardina Beach. What's that? It's all buffets here now. Yeah. Oh, I know. I, uh, yeah. So, it don't and the the takeout places here, they don't they don't make it at all. And there's a, a restaurant nearby where I know he's now the owner, but he was he he, he was the owner's son. I, I've known him for years, and I remember talking about it. They don't even make it. He didn't really. He knew what it was when I mentioned it, but like he, they don't make it. And he's okay. from China. Like, he, his family's from China. Oh, yeah. But they don't make it. I'm like, I don't understand how you don't make this. It's, re- it's like, ridiculously good. But <laughs> we teach their own, I guess. But anyway. But, yeah, so I'm, I got uh, sweet and sour chicken, which I'm not too crazy about because it's just sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have savory. But, um, so, yeah, I can understand that. Uh, so, um, let's, I guess you got food to make and I got. Oh, one last mention, because we, we'll probably be doing video games. Um, Outer Worlds won best it won game of the year at the New York Gaming Convention, I think is what it's called. Okay. And it's a game that I play. I, I've been playing it, and it's, it's so good. What platform? Uh, I computer. Okay. Um, it's really good. Um, we might be able, I don't want to go too much into it. Uh, but it's a game. The guys who did it, Obsidian, were the people who were initially did um, like Fallout and Fallout Vegas. Oh, okay. And they somehow I don't know if, why I have to look into it, but whatever it means they they lost the Fallout franchise, and it went to another studio. Well, yeah. this is like their version of Fallout, but it's like set in space, and it's like an RPG action RPG, which what they are now. Um, so good, and I'm glad it got Game of the Year from somewhere. I'm hoping at the big uh, awards thing, it'll get Game of the Year there. But um, my concern is now Cyberpunk 2077. Keanu. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, but go kudos to uh, Outer Worlds for winning the uh, the award. It's a it's a well deserved award. Um, so I guess what recommendations? Um, if I can put one in, uh, yeah, I'll put it I would say, put it. I would say check out the, um, the, the superhero showdown series. Uh, they just finished that. I think it's probably a final installment. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, right, back right. in, um, 
right before Christmas last year. And right. there there are so many references oh, yeah, no, to movies and such. It's right. it, it's 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 a festival and I really enjoyed it. Right. Uh so right. yeah, look up Superhero Showdown on YouTube. It's an animated uh uh fun right. little rock. Right. Um let's see. Uh what do I recommend? Um, go, you know what? Go, go get a Neil Pert book. Um, go, yeah. go read. Um, I'm going to probably mention, uh, let's see. Um, there, he did one. Let me see if I can go to my freaking bookshelf. Um, the one called um roadshow the landscape uh with drums um uh, it's uh, i think it was during their 40th anniversary tour he kind of traveled around and documented everything like what it's like to be in a touring band that's a brilliant book too that's one of his all of his books are brilliant but yeah go go read a neil pert book um any of all of them are good oh I, that's one thing i just kind of saw caught my eye um so we will have a facebook page soon cool. i don't know how when, but we're going to have a Facebook page. Um, I'll work on getting a uh, a an email th- account set up to t- contact us. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, how or where uh, this podcast is going to be released from, um, but you uh, like, subscribe, share, tell your buddies about it. Um, I'll try to put notes. I don't know about this one, but I'll pi- try to pi- put show notes uh, so you know what we're talking about or what we're referencing. Um, so, uh, this is the end of the inaugural, uh, show of the podcast. Um, I got to say my back hurts from laying the foundation here. What are you talking about? It's the foundation. It's, it's the starting. Oh, oh, the okay. and working your our back way. hurts. Yeah. From laying the foundation. Maybe you get your wife to give you a rub down. There we go. Yeah, that's not gonna happen either. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. A half an hour later, and I'm still not in bed yet. Um, so, um, I don't know how you want to end this. My back hurts. My back. That that should be the title of the show. <laughs> that we we'll, we should we will make that a title of the show, but not this one. Um, so, I guess we'll go. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm Phil. Uh, Beauty is the eye of the beholder. Uh, Have a great week. Uh, This will be issued bi-weekly. Y'all have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.